I love me a good flanker, okay? I really, really do. And while there is a little bit of a love-hate relationship, because I think we can all agree to some extent that it can be a little bit exhausting to see flanker after flanker being released all the time, I start to get a little bit annoyed sometimes. But then when I stop and look back and I see that the overwhelming majority of some of my favorite fragrances of all times happen to be flankers, it makes me rethink that just a little bit. Because yeah, it is annoying. We like to see new things and brand new lines. And I love seeing new stuff like that. But then when they start putting out flankers and they're improving upon that DNA and I start enjoying the flankers more than the original, it makes it to where I just kind of understand what they're doing here and I can't hate all that much. If you take a really popular, successful DNA, you're able to build on it and rework it and uh, listen to feedback and make it better, to me, that's pretty valuable. And so today I wanna to go over 10 fragrance flankers that you should definitely own because these are 10 times better than their original release. So that's really what we're going after here. We're gonna take a look at the original release and then the flanker, and even if there's a whole bunch in between, I think that what I'm talking about today is 10 times better than what was first released to start that line to begin with. So I will link these all down below to discounters, of course. So if I'm referencing prices, it's gonna be through discount websites and all that good stuff. Community tab, I'm posting deals over there every day, multiple times a day. Took a couple days off while we were away. Now I'm back at it. And uh, if you wanna get some rare, hard to find, discontinued stuff, that's gonna be the place. Or if you just wanna see some of the best deals possible, that's where you're gonna do it. Start off with Ralph's Club Parfum. Now there's only two, right? The original EDP and the Parfum. Now, I still really like the EDP, but this one, utilizing that Lavender Clary Sage Vetiver uh, DNA, is introducing some cardamom in here. So there's a little bit of a warmth to it, a little bit of a kind of a spicy twist that the original didn't really have. The original is very aromatic, so is this one, but this has some more sweetness and ultimately some more depth to it. And to me, it's a much more interesting fragrance when you compare the two head to head. That's a little bit more expensive given that it's a parfum and it's a new fragrance release. Uh, you know, every new fragrance that they're putting out seems to get more expensive across all the different uh, designer brands. But it's already starting to show up on discounters a little bit, so you can knock some of that retail price down. In my opinion, this is the one to go for. Next up, we have Intense Cidrat Boise by Mancera. So the EDP is still a top level niche scent especially when you take into consideration that both the EDP and this new Extrait de Parfum concentration are designer priced, and actually some designer fragrances are a bit more than these, even at discounters, it really puts into perspective just how great of a purchase either version is. I'll always love the EDP because that's the one that started my niche collecting to begin with. It's been out the longest. That came out a while ago. It took them a while to put this out. Uh, but now that I have this parfum, to me, this is the one to get. And if I was starting over from scratch and I wanted to pick up Cidrat Boise, at this point I would go straight for the Parfum or the Intense and I wouldn't even bother to get the EDP. To me, that's how good this one is. They upgraded the presentation as well to give you the magnetic cap and the pressurized atomizer. Instead of the twist on cap like the older ones, they're kind of migrating to this new format. Just so many improvements. The scent DNA itself is richer, it's stronger, has a little bit more of a kind of a powerful substance to it. And to me, also more interesting, this stuff here is just a great flanker. Up next, we have XX Artisan by John Varvados. This one has bitter orange, vetiver, and Sichuan pepper in here. But really, it's all about the vetiver. I love me a good vetiver fragrance. I think they're amazing because of their sheer versatility and wearability, and overall, just mass appeal. Um, just, just you know, ease of use is what I look for in a vetiver scent, and really, a lot of them will give that to you, unless you're going with a super, super earthy, stanky vetiver, which you know they do exist, especially when you go over to some niche products, right? And that may be a little bit more challenging, but most designer level vetivers are gonna be super clean and soapy and easy to wear and just very likable. And that's the direction that this one goes. Even though it is a, a you know vetiver prominent scent, it doesn't really smell like any of the others. You know, it doesn't smell like Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver or Roja Parfums Vetiver or Guerlain Vetiver or name any other popular vetiver. It's on its own here. You know, the bitter orange gives it a nice little twist with a spicy Sichuan pepper opening. Uh, really works well. Very clean. Very fresh. Very wearable. And one of their best 
fragrance releases in my opinion and that's saying something because they have some good stuff i would take this over the original artisan any day no questions asked and you know there are some slight similarities being that the original is also very bitter orange orange citrus heavy uh you know slight similarities but this one all around is much better Next up, Eros Parfum by Versace. This is the one to get out of the EDT and the EDP and Flame. To me, this is it. This is kind of the final form. Now, is this the end of Eros Flankers? Probably not. It may look that way because I did EDT, EDP Parfum. Now, granted, Flame was kind of a wild ball. They could do that as well. Uh, I just, I can't see them being done after they ramped up so quickly, but they may be. All I know is, as of what's currently on the market right now, this is the one that I would go for. And similar deal, if I was restarting my collection and I wanted to pick up an Eros, which I would want to, I love the DNA, I would get the Parfum and not bother with any of the other ones. It's stronger than the EDT and the EDP on my skin, longevity wise. Projection is still good, and if I want stronger projection, I just hit myself with a few extra sprays, which is no problem for me. Uh, the scent is a little bit more refined and smooth, and slightly, slightly yet less youthful. Still playful, but not quite as much as the EDT, so it's you know more mature to some slight extent. And overall, I just really like the, the overall quality and the smooth delivery of this one. To me, this is the way to go. Stronger With You absolutely has also won my heart over the EDT, you know, the original, and Intensely. Uh, this is kind of my, my main one because it uses that chestnut note and the rum accord in here. The rum is something new uh, that the you know DNA hasn't had up until now. And so you get a slight boozy quality. And again, that kind of helps this one to get away from the super playful juvenile smell just a little bit. You know, it's still a stronger with you DNA. This DNA is still gonna be playful, right? But it's just enough to make it move in a slight direction away from that which is all I care about. You know, if I don't want something youthful or playful, I just go for a completely different scent. But part of the reason why I like that one is because of those characteristics. It's a very easy going fall and winter time scent. Uh, that's very, very easy to pull off, very mass pleasing, great performance. And the way that chestnut comes across in here really just gives it this fall and winter time holiday smell to it that I think just smells great. Big fan of this one, really caught me off guard. We have Armani Code Parfum. You know, we got the EDP, what was that, just last year? Uh, and that was kind of out of nowhere considering Armani Code EDT has been out for a long time now. And they didn't rush, or I mean, they didn't wait around on uh, putting out a Parfum after that. They are just getting it done. So I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't even thinking about it. And I would have figured, well, if they were going to do it, maybe it would be in a few years later. But they just came out with this one, introducing Iris into the mix. I love Iris. And I got to say, this is the way to go. The original code is still an iconic scent. I think the EDP is a great improvement over that EDT. But ultimately, I think this Parfum is a great improvement over both of those. And again, I'm talking about comparing this to the original. I'm not talking about comparing this to Absolute or Profumo or anything like that. I'm just talking strictly the Armani Code DNA, you know, this style, EDT, EDP Parfum. Uh, presentation upgrade is nice. Magnetic cap, nice atomizer, very classy looking bottle. I actually like this better than the old ones. I really think it's great. And I would imagine that they're gonna move the entire line over to this at some point. Dior Ohm Intense. I would take this over Dior Ohm, the original any day. And not only talking Dior Ohm 2020, um, I would take this over that, but I'm also talking, you know, the original Dior Ohm with the iris. I would take this over that anytime. The reason why is because of the chocolatey sweetness that this one has. It's almost kind of gourmand, but it's ultimately very sexy and rich and kind of mysterious and just addicting. When I was picking this bottle up and you know getting it for the video, I was smelling it, of course, and every time it's just like, wow, there's something so delectable about this, and I'm probably gonna make it my scent of the night. There's something about it that's you know draws me in each time, and this is the way to go. Really impressed by this one too, the One Luminous Night by Dolce & Gabbana. I would take this over the EDT 100 times over. It's not even an, an afterthought. I would just, yep, give me Luminous because there's something about this one that is just incredible. It's one of their exclusive editions, but it's not so challenging, you know? You may look at a fragrance like this, and maybe you, you would think of something like Mysterious Night with the, uh, the Oud and Rose combination to where uh, it might be a little bit challenging, but they didn't really go that direction with this. 
Same thing with Royal Knight. That one's not challenging. This one isn't either. It's got this kind of balsamic vanillic sweetness with this uh, sweet date accord in here, which is kind of interesting. Good dose of sandalwood as well. It's sweet and kind of resinous and just smells amazing. It's a nice nighttime flanker. You know, I think all of the, the exclusive edition ones, Mysterious Royal, this one, all kind of have this nighttime upscale classy smell to them. Like if you're going out to a nice dinner in Dubai or something, you would wear something like this. Just ultimately very upscale and very expensive smelling. And, uh, this is just a winner of a flanker. Running down to the end, we have Blue de Chanel. This is gonna be the Parfum. I've expressed my uh, thoughts on this before, and uh, a lot of people are still EDP for the win. And at the end of the day, it really would be neck and neck. I mean, the Parfum, to me, still takes the cake, but it's not by a huge margin. It's just kind of by a a thread there because I still love the EDP. It's an iconic scent and for that matter, I love the EDT. I love Blue de Chanel. Maybe viewed as one of those boring, generic, over talked about DNAs and well, you know, yeah, it is um, over talked about. Um, a lot of fragrances have emulated this now and so that kind of puts it into this generic category. But to me, scent character alone, this is still a scent that brings me a confident, just satisfied feeling. You know, when I smell Blue de Chanel, I just love it. And when I wear it, I feel great every single time. And the Parfum is the one that just does it for me, uh, followed by the EDP, followed by the EDT. That's kind of the order that it goes in. You really can't go wrong with either of them though. But I do encourage you, you know, if you've been wearing the EDT for years and years and years as your signature scent, branch out. Give the Parfum a try or give the EDP a try. Yeah, these are expensive, but you can get samples of them online. Makes it much easier to make a decision. You just gotta try it at some point. And we're gonna end this one with Boss Bottled Absolute. Giant 200 mil bottle here. These always are ridiculously goofy. So this is going up against, well, the EDT Boss Bottled, okay? Um, and this is the one I would go for. Now, at one point, it would have been Boss Bottled Intense EDP is what I would have slotted right in here instead of this one. But they discontinued that one, which I really, don't understand why, because they have so many other flankers seemingly in production right now, at least you can get them easily on discounters, that I don't think are would have done anywhere near as well as Boss Bottled Intense EDP. So it really is confusing to me. I love that scent. This is the closest that I've really been able to get to Boss Bottled Intense EDP. And so that's why I like it. You get that cinnamon apple pie smell, that very uh, autumnal smell to it, you know, that the original Intense is known for. But this one, you get a little bit of a slight fruity plum accord, which is what makes it a little bit different. Got to change something up to make it a flanker. And so that's kind of where this one sits. I think it smells amazing. I really, really like this one a lot. And given the performance and just how close it is to the Intense, I would take this over the EDT any day. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. 10 fragrance flankers you gotta have because they are so much better than their original. I mean, there are some serious improvements being made with all of these right here and I highly encourage you check these out if you haven't. I will link them down below to discounters and samples as well if you wanna get a sample of like Blue de Chanel or whatever, um, since that's kind of going to be the most expensive one in the list, believe it or not, even more expensive than the Mancera, uh, you can go that way as well. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.